Welcome back everybody. Hopefully a uh, short but exciting video here today from Blue Glow Electronics. Um, what I'm going to show you today is how to replace the speaker protection relay in a Marantz unit. Um, this is a 2270 that uh, belongs to a guy up the road. Um, and I've actually had this thing on the bench uh, twice now. Um, I did a full resto on it and um, you know, kind of sent it home to him, and uh, you know, it, it acted perfectly here. He got it home, and every once in a while, intermittently, he would have some popping from the speakers, uh, a little bit of noise on one side. So I uh, brought it back in, kind of went through it a little more. Thought I found what it was, uh, kind of sent it back home, and uh, sure enough, it did it again. So um, I think the next step we're going to take is replace this uh, speaker protection relay. Um, you know what I'm. Kind of the theory there is if those things don't close good and have a good contact all the time, maybe they vibrate a little bit or uh, you get just a little bit of arcing in there, you'll end up with some popping sounds. So um, that's what we're going to do today. Going to replace that and um, hopefully we'll both learn a little something uh, through this process here. Okay, first thing I wanted to show you was where the speaker protection relay is. So if you look downward on the unit from the top, you got the top cover off. Um, typically there's a power supply board in the in a Marantz unit somewhere and it's a small little board and it's easy to identify. It's got a bunch of caps on it and it will always have a speaker protection relay um, on it. And the way that what this relay does is when you turn on the amplifier, it uh, there's a delay before this um, protection relay kicks in. And if it senses any type of short on the outputs, uh, this thing will never kick in. Um, so it's basically protecting the outputs here, um, both ends here of your amplifier, from being uh, shorted by, you know, a uh, damaged speaker or uh, maybe somebody hooked speakers up wrong or something. So, but if this thing, you know, think so, you think about it. It's a relay. It engages every single time you turn the unit on, and uh, if the contacts make good connection, your audio actually flows through this to the output to the uh, speakers. So. If for some reason these aren't making good contact, you can end up with some, uh, you know, some challenges with your audio. And uh, you know, the fact I've been having intermittent issues, which are absolutely the toughest to ever chase down. Um, you know, sometimes you'll just, uh, sometimes you'll have to uh, to do a trial and error thing here, and that's what we're going to do to replace this thing. Let me show you where you go about getting one of these. All right, a couple different ways to go about finding one of these. First up, you could go to eBay and search for Marantz uh, Relay and probably find one out here. You'll see they range anywhere from 15 to maybe uh, $20 or whatnot. Unfortunately, I didn't find one for a 2270 out here on the, uh, on the website. And it was probably a good thing I didn't, and uh, I'll show you why. So what I did was I made a post out on uh, Audio Karma, one of the uh, audio boards in the Marant section where there's a bunch of uh, people that, uh, like myself, that are Marantz enthusiasts. And I said, hey, I'm looking for a relay for 2270. Anyone know a cross-reference to a new one or where I could obtain a used one that's in good shape? And sure enough, uh, somebody popped back up with this number here, 653-MY2-02DC24. And, uh, you know, this is a uh, Mauser website, and um, went over here and looked, and check it out, $6.89 each. Now, if you ever order from Mauser, DigiKey, any of those guys, you'll know that usually there's a minimum order of, say, you know, $10 or $15, $20, and two, then you'll have to pay shipping. So, uh, so I ordered a couple of them, along with some other stuff I needed from Mauser, uh, and um, just got it all at the same time. And so when they showed up, um, I've got them here, and uh, we're good to go. And lo and behold, the bag showed up inside two beautiful uh, relays. Um, the ends down here, um, I'll end up having to take this screw out. And um, this thing will have a little stud that will end up uh, mounting in here. You can see where the original one is mounted up here. you kind of got the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight connections there. you got a little stud that comes through that holds it to the board. A couple wires on each. So I uh, guess what I'm going to do next... If your guess was take a picture of the uh, <laughs> the relay area here um, from a couple different angles, your guess would be right. So that's what I'm doing. Um, if I can learn to take, there we go. And I just like to 
get a couple pictures because uh, you never know when you go to uh, put something back together here and uh, lo and behold you're like oh gosh where did that yellow wire go and uh, pictures don't lie so uh, I always take them from a couple different angles and a digital camera they're free you can always delete them when you're done so we're going to dive into getting these wires unsoldered now that I know where they go and then using a uh, solder sucker and um, hang on I'll show you the solder suckers that I use around here just as another tip Alright, so I'm just going to use a solder sucker here. This is a pretty big one, and it's an Ungar. Um, this thing, you know, you kind of lock that thing down, and as you can see, a big old chunk of solder came out at the end there. But these things are pretty, pretty powerful uh, when, you, when you do the, push the activator on it. And then this is just a, uh, it's a Japanese version, a really high machined aluminum, um, really nice version that's just much smaller. Probably in this case, I'll end up starting with the big one and maybe using this one to do just a little bit of cleanup work. But you got to get all the solder off of these. If you don't, um, it's really hard to remove it. Another thing you could do, um, if you had like a, um, a hot air um, solder rework tool, you could use that. But I'm always a little hesitant on older boards like this. Don't know what the heat will, what they'll hold up to or the traces. So... Uh, Try to stick with a little bit of the manual action down here. Okay, I'm using the big Ungar here, and let me show you why. I'm able to take basically the soldering iron and hold it onto a spot like this. Um, for you know, for I don't know, 20 or 30 seconds to get all get it really hot and all the solder melted, and then very quickly pull it away, and I'm able to stick this thing completely, as you can see here, over that. It went all the way over that lug, and then you can push the button, and it kind of sucks it all up around it. Versus, um, you know, a smaller one like this with a small little tip, I'd have to get on each, you know, kind of coming around on each side of it. And uh, you see a nasty bruise I got on my hand the other day. <laughs> it's the hazards of dealing with heavy equipment. But um, yeah, the little one would, like I said, I might could use it for some cleanup, but. Uh, Really the big one is what you need in this case, something that will go all the way around the end of what you're trying to, uh, to suck. Okay, up next I'll grab a uh, nice little um, socket that fits it, uh, nut driver, and we will uh, we'll basically take this take this nut off the bottom here that, that holds the relay on now that we've got all the solder removed. Alright, it was as simple then as reaching around to the other side. I'm kind of grabbing the, uh, you can see here, I grabbed it on the other side and started pulling it through. I did have one little solder spot on the second lug down. You can see there it's kind of thick. And I just had to hold the soldering iron up to it right here. And as soon as I did, um, it popped through on the other side. The, the unit came out. And uh, we got to get this stud out of here because we've got to mount it basically into, into this one. And then we'll uh, take it from there. Okay, we got the old one here. You can see by the yellowed case and the new one here, the nice clean clear case. And you can see the screw came out of the new one and the stud came out of the old one here. It's just uh, threads on both ends. So it, it'll be as simple then as uh, putting this down in here and getting it started screwing in and then using the uh, little uh, nut driver to finish putting that in. Okay, you see, got, I put the screw back in, I put the screw into the other one, and the stud in the good one, and, uh, you know, somebody asked me in one of my videos one time about, or uh, posted afterwards about this little set of tools I use. Man, it, I can't, I can't tell you how handy that set is. It comes with a nice little frame here. You see it's a uh, stamped wire on it. Um, and it basically comes with a full set of uh, Phillips, you know, flat heads. Um, hex heads, nut drivers, um, gosh, I'm trying to think here what all these others are. But basically everything you would need to uh, to service any type of equipment. Everything I've done today, I've used this set. Kind of the whole set with the little bracket, it's about $200 shipped, uh, $190 some dollars, but well, well worth the investment. Because I used to just have another one of these white bins. By the way, these little bins are... Uh, these are Pampered Chef uh, kitchen tool stands, but uh, you know, I used to just have a lot of loose screwdrivers in here. They weren't organized, so I was always pulling stuff up, looking at the ends, trying to figure out the right thing. 
this thing keeps them in order, uh, small to large, and keeps them all organized. It, it really works out well. Up next, all I did was reach around and slide the uh, the relay right into those little holes. Um, slid right in, no problem. And I put the stud, uh, the nut, and uh, lock washer back on that stud. And as you can see, they're just sitting there waiting to be soldered at this point. Now, a couple things to pay attention to. One, each one of these needs to solder to the board, at least for the top four. If you'll notice, the bottom four are not soldered to the boards at all. Matter of fact, these bottom two pins here, which are the always open, I mean, always closed part of the relay, never uh, get used. It's just the these top four and these top, these uh, the third one down the, on each side um, get used and the wires will actually get soldered to those two if you'll remember but the bottom ones don't get used or soldered at all so we're going to get these things soldered back up now okay if you'll notice before I hooked up any of these wires back up and by the way I just stripped the, uh, strip tied these wires out of the way up here so they weren't hanging down here in my way when I'm soldering but I get all four of these soldered back to the PC board here um, and then that way, um, I know I've got good connectivity there, and now I can come down and solder these wires on these lugs. Up next, I've kind of trimmed all these wires so that I've just got a little bit sticking out. I've tinned the ends of each of them, um, put just a little bit of solder on the end of each of these wires, and I've also done the same with each of these sockets. You'll notice I've got a little bit of solder, kind of uh, tinned each of the leads already, so that when I get these wires on there, it's really easy to get them to stick. Um, the old relays had a bigger through hole type. You could see you could feed a wire through it and then wrap it around and solder it, which I would have liked. But the newer relays just has a stud, and you're going to have to solder to that stud. So the solder is going to have to be what holds them in place. It's, it's not my favorite, but um, you know these things are strip tied off really good up here. You can see. And this board's not going to go anywhere or move, so we should be okay. There should be no movement happening, causing those things to break loose. All right, as you can see, I got them dressed down, kind of bent around on each side, and uh, soldered back on. Should be good to go at this point. One thing to note, I put a little uh, cushioning over the top of the microphone hole on this thing and taped it on there just to see if it would help with the uh, tinniness of the sound. Still considering a new camera, but I just bought this one uh, not too long ago, and it's a couple hundred bucks. Um, but I have been reading online now that uh, even though it's one of the top-rated cameras out there for up-close uh, work like this, it sometimes does have a tinny sound. So I'm trying to decide whether I ditch this and buy another one, but uh, I'll let you give me some more feedback on that. Let's get this thing hooked up and see how it sounds now. Well, the good news is it's playing and playing well. Um, at least the repair was a success, but it's one of those things, the fact this thing was only doing this intermediately, you know, um, I'll probably just have to, I'll play it some here for a day or two, but probably end up sending it back home with the customer and, the, you know, maybe it happens in a day or a week or a month, I'm not sure, but uh, hopefully it doesn't happen again ever, so. Uh. Thanks again everybody for watching. Hopefully you've learned how to replace the relay in uh, about any Marantz unit or any stereo unit to be, to be honest. And keep giving me some feedback on how the microphone might have sounded this time, whether it was better or worse or uh, indifferent. And we'll, we'll, we'll fix that one way or another. Thanks.